while I was just at Dollar Tree and I found this light bulb there for a dollar. They had a whole bunch, in fact. And uh, interesting is um, it was one dollar. This looks like a second generation of their bulbs. And uh, according to the packaging, this is actually dimmable. So for one US dollar, you get a 60 watt, 810 lumen bulb that claims to be dimmable. That's amazing. Wow, things have gotten cheap. Okay, let's take a look inside of this packaging. So here's the bulb. Entirely plastic. Yep, even the base is plastic. Caution. Suitable for damp locations. Wow, that's cool. LED lamp made in China. Let's see, I'm trying to see up close here what this is saying. Globe brand. 810 lumens, 120 volts, 85 milliamps, 60 hertz, E26 base, 3000K. So the packaging said warm white. Warm light. But, uh, I don't know, 3000K is not particularly warm. Just some information on the uh, warnings here. Uh, it does say minimum temperature negative 20 centigrade or minus 4 Fahrenheit, which is typical, I guess. But it does specify the device shall not be used in a totally enclosed or recess sealed fixture. So obviously that's a, a heat consideration. Lamp may not be compatible with all dimmers, that's, that's a given. For more information on the dimmer compatibility, visit the site globelectric.com. It does have a, a warranty of five years from the date of purchase based on the use of three hours per day. If it fails in that time, we will replace it. Send them back the bulb. So that's not bad. A $1 bulb having a three, a five-year warranty, even though the usage uh, considerations aren't so good, but there's really no way for them to know. You could say you used it five minutes a day and it still failed. So. It's not like there's a timer circuit or anything on this, but to be honest, the postage on this bulb to send it back is more than likely going to cost more than one dollar. So I don't really think it's worth it. Okay, so with just the one dollar Dollar Tree bulb in, let's see what happens with the dimmer. Okay, it came on, and there was a little bit of a delay uh, before startup. And let's check dimmability. Yeah, it absolutely works fine. I'd say the range of dimmability is quite good. Let me see if I can hear any noise when I have it on a, a lower dim setting. Well, I don't hear any noise. It is up on the ceiling, so it's my head's not near it. But on the lower dim level, there's absolutely no noise. And the smoothness of dimming is fantastic. I'd say it works just as well as the IKEA bulbs. And let's see if I can turn it off and start it up while fully dimmed. And that works as well. And that's actually better than the IKEA bulbs. With those two in there, if I have the dimmer slid all the way to the dimmest setting, I turn it on, I, they won't start. I have to actually raise the, the setting a little bit. Okay, so in my desk lamp here, I just have a typical Philips bulb, LED bulb. Very nice white color temperature. I'd say it's pretty warm and it's a decent approximation of an incandescent. Let's switch to this uh, Dollar Tree bulb and just see how this looks. Okay, well, so right off the bat, I'd say that it's a much cooler white light color. I mean, the 3000K versus uh, one of these flat Phillips. This is definitely 2700K. It's a noticeable difference. I would say, personally, personally, I don't think it's as nice. I prefer the warmer colors myself. You know, obviously, that's up for personal interpretation. But for myself, I don't like it. The white color, it's pretty good. Um, you know, it's not like a green or blue or any kind of weird uh, shade. It's still white. It's just not as, it's just not as warm. 
Okay, I removed the envelope from the bolt, but you just have to kind of pry it up. It appears to just be glued on. It's pretty strong adhesive. I was not able to do it with my hands. And here's the bulb on the inside. Very interesting that it does have this little diffuser installed on here, which is kind of nice. Let's get this off here. Let's take this off. Okay, that comes right off easily enough. And let's take a look at the bulb. Well, at the PCB, I mean. So again, omnidirectional, 810 lumen, A19, 120 volts. Oh, construction quality appears to be pretty nice. It's uh, soldered. These are silicone wires. Okay, I'm measuring the output of the power supply on this. And, oops, sorry. There you go, I'll plug it in. So 36.1 or so volts DC is the output. And let's just take count up the number of chips here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 12 chips. Yep, so we have 36 divided by 12. 3 volts each. That's about right. The next thing I notice is that you know, I haven't have, had it on for a few minutes, and the base is quite warm, but the chips themselves aren't at all. I mean, there's a bit of warmth, but it obviously is transferring heat quite well into this base. Thermal paste, not a lot, but there's definitely some there. And the PCB is alu aluminum backs, so should transfer the heat very nicely away from those chips and onto this metal bracket underneath here. So I'm just giving a little test to this board. Let's see how the LEDs work. I'm currently driving them at 28.1 volts and on the power supply absolutely no current is being registered whatsoever. I'd say that they're all pretty even. The performance, obviously this one right here is a little bit dimmer, but you can see that these are just single chip LEDs. You know, trying to pull it out by the screw hole just bent the entire thing. Huh. Well, I forcibly removed the base. Which is probably not something I had to do. <laughs> Looks like this is, this is sort of held in. This by friction. And there are the wires. But the uh, power supply is not potted and it's loose. But this, this um, metal thing here is very well permanently attached. Okay, well here's the power supply. I had to do a little bit of <laughs> forceful cutting to remove it, but um, I got it out. Uh, as you can see, the metal here that the heat is transferred onto actually encloses this entire unit. So it's uh, a decent amount of heat transfer. I'm, I'm, I'm sort of impressed. It's thin, and it's, uh, it's definitely aluminium, but it does transfer, but it does go inside the entire unit, all the way almost down to the, this Edison base here. So that's, that's decent. It would have been nice if the metal was just on the outside. Of course, if it had fins, that would do even better for heat transfer. But still, at this price point, not bad. So here's the power supply, and, um... Interesting is it actually has some certification marks on here. There's the RU there. So and it has a couple of things. E2071, I think it says. LED8 is on the top line, and ROHS, of course, uh, lead-free construction. Um, input here has a couple, looks like a few fuses on both sides. And what is this? A PTC or a varistor? Well, that's nice. A little bit of input protection. Input protection. Oh, sorry, let me turn off the multimeter. Uh, there's a choke. You know, some capacitors here, and then there's a giant cap here, which is obviously the output cap. 50 volts, 330 microfarad, uh, barrel brand, which I'm not familiar with. Someone else will be able to tell me if that's any good. 
130 degrees centigrade. Wow. I'm, uh, I'm quite impressed for a $1 unit. Obviously, and then we got the little transformer there. Because this is obviously a switching power supply. And on the bottom here, we've got the uh, rectifier. And we have, what, like an 8-pin controller chip here. I'm going to have to see if I can try to read that. Some other passives. Overall, the construction quality is amazing for something that's one U.S. dollar. So for the second generation Dollar Tree bulb, I would really recommend this. If you can find it, of course. I haven't seen any LED bulbs at Dollar Tree in quite a while, but the one I went to in Portland today had probably... They had a huge pile of these. There we go. Thanks for watching. Thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Bye.